Hey everyone, welcome to Pop XP. And before the show starts, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. And don't forget, if you can, make sure to share our stream on all your social media outlets. We appreciate it, and thanks for helping us grow the Pop XP channel. Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's the Brain of the Mainframe here now. Scott with the Pop XP, and joining me is my good friend, one of my compadres. So happy to have him back on hanging out, Mr. JC Vaughn. JC, how are we doing? I am doing great, Nile. I have been, uh, as you are aware, uh, I've been burning the candle at four, perhaps five ends, working on the uh, Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide to Lost Universes. Yes, and I've been watching uh, that. And uh, having a lot of fun doing that, but that has kept me from any regular appearances here on the Pop XP, and I'm glad to be coming down the final stretches on that, so I can be back periodically. Yes, we are glad to have you back. Hey, Shaggy, how we doing? <laughs> hey, Scoob. <laughs> What's going on, it? Billy? Did you see it at all? I did. I did. You and Graham look like uh, brothers. <laughs> oh. With the uh, I'm doing all right. I have, have a, a hole in my friggin' leg that's draining blood coming oh, out. That is that is wonderful. Yeah, I'm gonna go that's... wash my face real quick because I got all this. Sticky all right. Stuff. Well, you you hey yeah, we're gonna get going with the show. Hey, we got man, a great guest it. tonight. I'll just, I'll just uh, walk yeah. out right now. Yeah, you walk out and pop back in. All right, perfect. TJ James, Jeff is in the house. Hello, TJ. Yes, and uh, Jay Dread would love to see you guys interview Mike Barron sometime soon. We probably I have been. I on. have been. We you, you guys have had him on, and I a have been uh, uh, corresponding with him uh, recently. Oh, excellent! Uh, and he, uh, of course, has a new uh, Kickstarter, Thin Blue Line, which I've shared around on my social media and some of my uh, uh, crime comics friends and some of yes. my actual police friends have uh, shared that around too. All right, excellent. We got her in the house. What's going on? Victor, welcome. Devil Flyer, welcome here. And uh, without further ado, Mr. J.C. Vaughn, why don't we introduce the man of the hour? I think that would be great. Tonight's guest, an Overstreet Hall of Fame inductee, has received the Eisner, the Inkpot, the Mucker, the Gem, and the Speakeasy Awards and has been nominated for the Harvey and Ignatz Awards too. His work has appeared in Spectrum and at the Library of Congress, the Norman Rockwell Museum, <laughs> and other fine institutions. He has designed for Lady Gaga, the Black Eyed Peas, for ABC's Beauty and the Beast and Square Roots, as well as Super Clyde, the Millers, and Two Bro Broke Girls, less said the better, on CBS, among his many creations, favorites of mine, or co-creations too. Mars, Blood of the Innocent, Breathtaker, which was the first Vertigo uh, trade paperback, Easy Street, Lone Justice, Prince Nightmare, Hammer of the Gods, and about a gazillion other things. And those are just the creator-owned ones. His most recent successful crowdfunding projects prior to tonight's subject have included Songs of Giants, Dr. Cthulhu, probably one of my all-time favorite titles. Yes. And the Frankenstein mob mobster audio drama. So let's welcome Mark Wheatley. <laughs> Mark, welcome Hi. back to the show. Oh, boy, after that <laughs> yell, I'm like a little coarser. <laughs> it's just, it just it felt appropriate for you know Edgar Rice Burroughs. You know, I mean, it, it, we we had to bring in you know we got a true king of the jungle here, right? Yeah, the you jungle know, I, world I of comics. I did include that in our video for the uh, Kickstarter, and I had to get that licensed. <laughs> <laughs> license. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. I'm here. It's okay. There you <laughs> it's go. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's advertising use. Yes. It, yes. it 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 is it is indeed. And I, uh, Mark, we were recently uh, able to hang out for a little bit, first time since COVID, at uh, the Baltimore Comic Con on Friday. How was the rest of the con for you? It was fantastic. Um, I really, uh, I mean, I've I've been to three conventions since August. Mm. Uh, two really little ones, and then one huge one, which was the Baltimore Comic Con. And in every case, 
the fans and I think the pros too all have this pent up desire to see each other. <laughs> um, we may have gotten a little burnt out back in 2019, but by now everybody is quite interested in getting back together and boy, the money was flowing. People were buying left and right. Um, it, it was crazy. Uh, I, really noticed, I noticed uh, on Friday when I was there, your your poster, your display poster for the Frankenstein mobster audio drama was attracting a lot of attention. Did that continue through the show or was that just like the Friday crowd? Um, actually, uh, it, it went through spurts because people, you know, it's hard to focus on any one thing there. And when people sure. did focus on it, it then also created more people looking at it. And the main thing that was getting attention besides the fact that it was just a new piece of Frankenstein mobster art for the first time in forever, mm -hmm. Um, was that uh, we were announcing our two leads in the production. Uh, um, Danny Roebuck is playing uh, Frankie, and uh, Debbie Roshan is playing Terry Todd, the young lady who's the youngest detective in Monstro City. So, uh, and if you don't know, uh, Danny Roebuck is also playing Grandpa Munster in the new Munsters movie. So, yes, and yeah. he's been in everything, and he's played detectives and policemen so many times, he fits right into this role. So that's, that's actually really great. And that'll bring some more attention to the property. How are things progressing with it? Um, they're going right. We're recording now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's right now as we speak. Could be. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're in the other room recording. It right could now. be. Could be. Uh, seriously, they could be doing it right now. Uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we have um, uh, recording studios in, I think, Boston and L.A., uh, rented for various different actors in various different regions to come in. And uh, then a lot of folks are doing things from their home studios. Wow, oh, that's nice. great. Yeah. You know, it was an interesting thing about uh, the Frankenstein mobster. Uh, I didn't think about this until we started discussing doing the audio play. But he has to be, I mean, literally thinking about this, he has to be played by four different actors. Yeah. Yeah. Or, it's, or since it's voice, Four different voices, let's say. Right, and that's yeah. how we ended up going. Uh, Danny is doing the Frankie voice, and then Mark uh, Redfield is doing the other three mobsters. Well, anybody who's heard Mark's other productions will will know that that's this is going to come off great to begin with. Oh, but yeah. it just, you know, I I've been in love with Frankenstein mobsters since I read your screenplay. You know, so it's it's been been a been a long time for this. Niall, have you have you ever read Frankenstein mobster? Uh, I have not read Frank. You definitely, Einstein you Monster. definitely got to get a hold no. of the tra the trade paper back of that. It it is because yeah, we did. If you guys go back and you're interested in it, we do. Um, you know, how long? It's been a couple months, right? Since we yeah. had the the whole team on. And, yeah. Uh, the, you know, you guys get the information there. And back even, in July, I, mean, you can, I think it was. Yeah, back in July, and that's yeah. pretty cool. Now, when are you actually looking to? When is this actually going to be released? The full. Uh, audio? Um, we're aiming for early December. Uh, at least the backers would get it then. It won't be on Audible probably until, I think, late January. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. And there he's back. Is, all cleaned up. Look at that. He looks younger. What happened? <laughs> I had to wipe that spirit gum off. I should have got spirit gum remover. Devil Flyer. Yeah. I have some of the singles. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, Bill, they're, Billy, I think you're more of a soul patch guy than a than a Yes. Yeah. I can yeah. see that. I got... <laughs> Yeah, but don't you get a soul patch. You just touch it all the time, right? It's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and, you, and, you say, and you say, ow, my jazz beard. Oh, um, <laughs> the, uh, oh, devil flyer. the devil flyer, he said that uh, he had some of the singles. One of the things I loved, Mark, about what you did on the individual issues of uh, Frankenstein Mobster is your who's who of uh, variant cover artist, man. Well, you know, you say that because um, yesterday was the birthday of one of our best cover artists, which was Bernie Wrightson. Oh, oh yeah, he did the cover for issue number seven, which was just a sensational piece of art. And, yeah. Well, you know, I, I mean, no, no, I mean, obviously, no offense meant to Bernie, but every piece you had was freaking great, man. I mean, oh, seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was that. So let's let's talk about about the current project. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. First off, you yeah. you have had this string of really cool projects. Oh, yeah, everyone's that. scanning that. Can Make I... sure everyone scans it. Scan me. Scan on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Will it work, Billy? Will know. it work? Well, here we go. I'll make it big for you. Doesn't okay. Work. Now I scan it. Now what do I do? Oh, open it. up. 
does it automatically. Look at that. Shut up, Eric. I'm going to pledge for this right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, I mean, it, it, let's talk about That's this. Edgar project. Rice Burroughs Visions of Adventures. I mean, so, you know, the art, by the way, is just everything you do is just so like, it, it's like a dreamscape, man. It's like really, oh, you capture everything so perfectly. Um, let, let's talk about this because I, you know, I was reading, you know, if you go into the description, everything, it sounds like, you know, this has been a passion for quite some time. Oh yeah! Oh geez! Absolutely! I uh, I grew up on a corner of the Great Dismal Swamp, and uh, Tarzan always seemed to be a very believable character to me. <laughs> and I actually lived in a treehouse when I was in high school, and I had been building treehouses all through my childhood. And finally, yeah. by the time I got to high school, I was building them good enough that I could live in them. <laughs> oh, nice! Yeah. So yeah, I've been a fan of Burroughs ever since my my grandfather uh, died when I was fairly young. And we were cleaning out his uh, bookcase, and uh, he had a copy of, uh, let's see, uh, Tarzan and the Jewels of Opar in there. And I've got wow. the copy. I've got it right here. This is it. Right here. This is it. Tar and where, how do you do this? Uh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, that's that's, that's, that, that's the copy from your grandfather? That's it. Pristine condition. It was sitting on the shelf. And that's how I got introduced to wow. two people. Edgar Rice Burroughs and J. Allen St. John, the artist who did the cover. Phenomenal. And, and both of those things had a serious effect on me. It's almost like getting bit by a radioactive spider. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, you, you've been involved with, with fan groups about uh, uh, for Burroughs, but you've professionally done a lot of like Tarzan covers and a lot of other stuff. Did, oh, was, yeah. that, was that a natural extension of your of your fandom or did that how did that happen? Actually, it's a little backwards. I mean, when I was when I was a kid, I published a fanzine, but it was kind of a science fiction um, uh, uh, comics fanzine. It was a blend of the two. And uh, when I got into working professionally, I had just done the Breathtaker book when I was approached uh, at Insight Studios to have Insight Studios package and edit um, and produce uh, a new series of Tarzan comics for Semic International, and we produced a lot of Tarzan comics for the whole world, and some mm -hmm. of those were actually printed by Malibu in the United States, and this was around 91 to maybe 94, 95, something like that, um, and during that time, I got sucked into Burroughs' fandom, um, and I've been hanging out with those guys ever since. A lot of them are very good friends. Uh, we're, we're, we have a, there, there's this overarching... Um, fandom no, called the Burroughs Bibliophiles, and uh, that's the international group. Our local group is the National Capital Panthens that uh, involves the Baltimore, Washington area, and we've been doing a journal every month, and uh, we're up to like 279 now, mm -hmm. so that'll give you an idea how many months I've been doing this journal <laughs> for them. <laughs> so I do the cover, I, I handle the cover every issue. Yeah. So anyway, then I did more professional work. I've, uh, I've illustrated, um, let's see, I illustrated, uh, well, I did this book uh, to celebrate um, the Burroughs second century after he had his, you know, he's heading into his second hundred years. Um, we, uh, we did, um, I'm losing track where everything is here. Um, see. I did this uh, Tarzan book. This is the this oh, is cool. a Philip Jose Farmer uh, uh, book, uh, which is part of the official uh, series of Tarzan books that were started by Edgar Rice Burroughs. And, um, so that wait, was did, a, did you acquire the license to this? Um, I have the license to do this portfolio. Okay. But, okay. but the books I'm showing you were actually done for the Burroughs Company or for publishers who had licensed it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've always done, not just for Burroughs, but anything I've ever done, I've always negotiated for the right to retain the right to publish my works in collections of my own work. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I have the right from the Burroughs company to uh, not only collect the work, but also to use the Burroughs name. Oh, excellent. Which excellent. is a registered trademark. Yeah. Now, with, with the portfolio that you have up on um, Kickstarter here, 
I, what are what are we looking at? Like, are you you're taking snippets from a bunch of different stories and creating your visual of yep. the ri your written interpretation to your visual? That's right. Um, these are selections, except for the uh, um, Heroes of Mars piece. If you scroll up this a little further, that piece right there uh, is the p one piece that I painted specifically for the portfolio. Mm -hmm. Everything else is from a, a prior publication. It was used as a cover of a Tarzan book. It was a cover of the Pantons Journal. It was illustrations for the Swords, of, Swords Against the Moon Men book that I did for the Burroughs Company. Um, uh, uh, yes, it's, it's all stuff that's come from other uh, venues and it's, it's been combined into this portfolio. When we launched the portfolio two, two weeks ago, um, it got funded in a little under six hours Oh, wow. Congratulations. And, um, we originally planned for eight prints to be included, and I was going to sign the portfolio print. But now we have 14 prints. I'm doing 3,000 signatures. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and um, uh, uh, did I mention we're 14 prints in? Yeah, 14 prints. Uh, you know, and um, God, I, I've lost track. But yeah, we have so many stretches. Oh, yeah, we got two free books. Two free oh, books nice. as well. Two free books. Uh, we have a digital sketchbook of 32 pages of my artwork. And we mm -hmm. have a uh, Inspirations of uh, Adventure that includes a lot of the illustrators that inspired me to do this kind of work. Mark, I have a I have a question. Looking at the looking at the the images of the prints, mm -hmm. um, I don't as a as a fan of your work and more or less a Burroughs layman. I'm really only conversant about John Carter. Um, I don't detect any bias that you're favoring one of the properties over another. It's sort of like you're going across. You like you're doing your best to get into all of them. Uh, of that. Is that the case? That is, absolutely, yes. I mean, Burroughs is well known for Tarzan. Uh, mm -hmm. He's probably a seminal science fiction author. Um, uh, I don't know that we would necessarily have Superman if we hadn't had John Carter, for example. Yeah. Um, uh, but he's also written westerns, South Sea adventures, monster stories, um, romances, uh, inner earth stories. Uh, he's done interstellar stories there's so many different things that he's been involved with so many worlds he's created so many i don't know if i could say visions that he's come up with um that uh, i felt that i should cover as many bases as possible for example this piece right here stop where you're scrolling this piece from the moon made was a piece of development artwork that i've done in the past year for a proposed streaming uh tv miniseries that uh, the Burroughs Company is currently working on, featuring all the Moon Men books. And mm -hmm. um, I now have two pieces in the portfolio from two of the different miniseries that they're pitching. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, Brian, Brian Blevins, I don't know if you've ever met him on the show, um, was telling, you know, there, he's in Arkansas and there's a, a gentleman out there, Mike, and I forget his last name. I guess he was actually given, I guess they found a, uh, a Tarzan story that was never completed. By Edgar, and uh, oh, he oh, was given right. the. What's yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, and he finished writing it. Yeah, yes. he finished writing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know. I thought that was pretty interesting. Do you yeah, know I, Mike? I, do you know Mike? I do, and I've you illustrated do. four of his books. Yes. Oh, excellent! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we want to get you guys on someday, and, and we can talk about some, uh, you know, good old science fiction, the pulp goodness, Devil yep, Flyer. There you the go. Pulp goodness. So, it's how, so Mark, you're all coming back. I love Mark, this you're a, right here. You're you're a big pulp collector, and I'm, this, a, I'm a medium pulp collector. Okay, you're a big pulp collector to me. <laughs> okay. This this last year, the during the during the during the pandemic, uh, we've seen what can you know easily be called a renewed level of general interest in the pulps from collectors who might not have been collecting them or who are suddenly willing to be very competitive price-wise yes. on them. What has this been like for the people who are the regular pulp collectors that aren't like fly by night or jumping in because it's the flavor of the moment? Has it made things more difficult? Um, 
I'm glad I bought the vast majority of my pulps about 15, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Because it's getting harder every year just to find them, much less afford them. Um, uh, amongst pulp collectors, there's still, you know, a kind of a trade situation that you can exercise. Um, but I know for a fact people trying to get into the field buying original pulps as opposed to reprints, um, it's it's getting it's getting a little pricey. So, yeah. We've had we've had all sorts of and I know this from the Overstreet perspective. We've had all sorts of records set in the in the last six months, particularly. Yeah. Well, here's a. But fact. again, it's all conditioned too. You know that. I mean, it's always conditioned, and there are a lot and and finding good condition pulps. I, I think in comics there's a there's more of a gradation between good and bad, but in pulps you've got two grades. You've got you've got perfect and you've got pile of wood pulp. <laughs> yeah, I. It, it's funny. Uh, when we were when we were in the pre-opening stages of uh, Jeppy's Entertainment Museum, I had to move some uh, Platinum Age comics out of one case and replace them, and basically flopping cases between Platinum Age comics and pulps. Mm -hmm. And the Platinum Age comics, some of which were worth thousands of dollars, didn't make me nervous in the slightest. I, you know, I'd handled all sorts of stuff. Uh, carrying around the museum, you know, movie posters and six figures and that kind of stuff like that. None of it made me nervous. I was cautious, but that was it. The pulps, I swore I could feel them dissolving as I moved from <laughs> one case to the other. And and they certainly were not the priciest things then. Yeah. The only the only one that I would even describe as remotely supple was actually really supple, was that shadow annual that was regular magazine size. Mm. And it was it was like on decent paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and which must have been some kind of fluke, but it was but but the you know the, the the thing that's so attractive for many of us that haven't read a ton of them is the, is the is the covers. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And and I see I see some of that in the style of what you're what you're sharing in this portfolio. Yeah, I'm very much influenced by it. I, I like the direct in your face quality of the pulps. There's no apologies. There's uh you know, it's just 100% gung-ho, action, lurid <laughs> adventure. <laughs> now, Devil Flyer asks, he goes, there were single staple comics in World War II. Were there single staple pulps? No, because the pulps were um, uh, perfect bound, and the mm -hmm. uh, staples went through the stack as opposed through the spine. So you'd have, like, maybe six signatures that would be think of it in terms of six, six comic books mm -hmm. without covers and instead of stapling it through the spine you stack them up and you would staple them from top to bottom and there would have to be two to hold that together so, oh, man. Then, okay. then they would glue the cover on and then they wouldn't trim it and this is another reason why it's almost impossible to find good condition because the covers would hang like a quarter of an inch over the edge of the magazine and constantly be bashed so by the time you got it brand new off the newsstand it had already been torn along the edges <laughs> mm -hmm. so you'll never find a good one no. you heard it here <laughs> well you will and, but they're the ones that are you. worth all the money yeah yeah yeah, yeah, so. yeah. but they yeah no they inspired me to do this artwork in many ways um and uh you know my previous uh, uh, book that I did, Songs of Adventure, uh, Songs of uh, Giants. Giants. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Thank, thank you, Jeff. You keep me up. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I, I did this fine line uh, style that was reminiscent of the line artwork that you would find in pulps. Mm -hmm. And um, since then, I've backed into incorporating that into my color work as well. So I, I think I draw better when I use an ink pen. And so um, I do the line artwork, and then I paint it over that. And so um, we've, it, we've been offering um, the uh, original ink drawings as something called the Master Edition on uh, this uh, uh, Kickstarter. And I've been rather impressed at how fast the Master Edition has been selling because I have been posting new pieces of artwork, and they go almost as soon as I put them up. Mm -hmm. And considering... Awesome. Uh, considering the price uh, for the original artwork, uh, I find that's pretty impressive. That's that's pretty cool, Mike. I'm looking here on the on the on the page. 
And so you've got 16 days left. Normally speaking, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a lull uh, after, you know, you get you opened really strong with this, which was really impressive. And that sort of seems like it's continued. Is that the case? Um, it was really hot and heavy the first mm, five days. Um, since then, we've been getting like three or four new pledges a day, something like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing really big, but it's nice and steady. And when somebody buys a piece of artwork for four hundred and fifty dollars, that you know that kicks it up pretty far. <laughs> yeah, De Devil Flyer asks the visions of Adventure logo is wonderful. Who did your letters? Uh, I have a person who does that for me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> now, but you know, you do. That's an interesting thing. I, I wanted to point that out. Let's see. Um, where did that? Here it is. So we're going back here again to the. Uh, Tarzan of Jewels of Opar. Cover, once again, is by J. Allen St. John, who not only did the painting, but he also designed the logo mm -hmm. and the logo treatment and the placement of that. Um, one of my other favorite books that uh, Burroughs did is The Mucker. And this is, uh, again, a J. Allen St. John cover with a logo designed by him. And my logo that I designed um, is inspired by the work that St. John did. So is that it's not focusing? There it is. Yeah, no, that was, looks great. Yeah. Yeah, and it's plenty of reflection. But um, yeah, so um, I also uh, my my passion not just in pulps in, in collecting, but it, is old magazines. Mm -hmm. And I know people always think that I'm I'm insane, but I've got thousands of magazines going back to like 1880, and that's where illustration really began in this country. Um, and, uh, I'm just really inspired the earlier, the better. I don't know. There's just a feel there's a, um, there's a, there's a innocence, a lack of self-consciousness, uh, mm -hmm. of, amongst the artists. They, they, they were not afraid to throw their entire imagination into it with a great deal of passion. And they also were able to spend sometimes a month or more and have a really excellent budget to, to really develop. Um, an illustration. I mean, uh, somebody like Frank Schoonover from uh, the uh, Brandywine School, uh, you know, regularly took uh, trips to the Pacific Northwest during the winter to trap with the uh, uh, Native Americans and um, uh, uh, learn firsthand what that life was like before he would actually, you know, paint the illustrations for Call of the Wild or something like that. So, um, you know, there was a there's an authenticity in that material that you just can't get anymore, even if you wanted to, because the budgets aren't there, the time isn't there. So I take a lot of inspiration from that. And that's what's going to be, that kind of material is what I'm pulling from in my collection for the uh, design qualities that I'm using and also uh, the uh, inspirations of adventure book that we're offering, the digital book uh, that we're offering as a freebie to go along with one of the stretch goals we had. We said... I think you a, sorry, I think you made a really excellent point with the, the commitment to doing that. Um, you know, bizarrely, Billy did that with Sergeant Rock. He went to France on his own dime. Yeah, and it wasn't right. like DC was going to pay him to do that. Oh, yeah, and a lot uh, of I mean, they, they, that, couldn't even, they couldn't even be bothered to market the book. Yeah. Um, but, but that's the way you have to do stuff. That's what makes something muted, Billy. valuable beyond just pop fiction, right? That, 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 that makes it touch people. That makes it... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 everything. Yeah, that, I don't know. This is why you know, never again. You know, maybe, <laughs> but they well, just do it. Yeah. Don't do it for DC Comics. Do it yeah. for your project. Oh, sure, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to go to Africa because I have a great idea for a Tarzan story. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Devil Flyer says Billy signed my rocks. <laughs> TMI. <laughs> Sergeant Rock. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Sergeant Rock. Sergeant Rock. Yeah, that was that was disturbing. This is a family show. Um, <laughs> hey, Mark, family. I want to tell you that, Mark, I, I <laughs> pledge it. I got the uh, portfolio level. Oh, well, thank you. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting that. When Ooh, can it we will be an things? unboxing. Yes, <laughs> a totally unboxing. That's why I got unboxing. that one, dude. Yeah, it's a yeah. big one. Uh, when can we expect uh, the, this to uh, ship? Well, um, 
It's going to ship as soon as we can, of course. It's not promised until January. Mm -hmm. But we're using, here's a couple things. Right now, everybody's probably familiar with hearing that books are shipping late. Paper is hard to get. Um, and I wanted to try to avoid those problems. So we're printing not only in the United States, but we're printing in Maryland. So my printer is in driving distance for delivery. It's going to be in the back of my vehicle. So um, <laughs> the paper, the paper in September, we sourced paper for this project. And we reserved enough paper for nine prints. But oops, we're doing 14 prints now. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're scrambling. But the good news is, is that if it comes to it, we can print the ones just for the people who have backed us and, and get enough to print the entire portfolio and then finish the print later. The printers already agreed to do that uh, for no extra charge. So um, we have our bases covered. The main thing that's going to take me time is, again, 3,000 signatures. I'm signing um, four plate, no, yeah, five, no, five plates. <laughs> My brain doesn't want to accept it. I'm signing five <laughs> plates and the folder. So um, <clears throat> that's going to take some time. And also, uh, there's a uh, level called the Artist Edition, where I'm doing a uh, print-sized uh, sketch, original sketch, to be included in the portfolio. And um, there's 30 of those. And I think there's only two of those left. Um, there's 30 of those that I'll have to do. And um, so that, that's where the time will go. <laughs> we're, we're going to be going, we're already got, we've already gone to press for the folder. Mm -hmm. because it's signed and limited to 500 copies. We knew we knew that. We knew we were going to be doing that. So the folder is being printed right now. Um, and so that will be ready to go, and it's just a matter of me signing prints in December, essentially. I, I got to say, I, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at it, and it's not like this is any surprise to me, but that's a freaking great bit of lettering there, Mark, on that on, oh, yeah. on, on the screen. Thank you. You know, I've... Shout been, out to Richard Starkings in Comic Craft, by the way. Uh, I, I love their fonts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I, I've been the beneficiary of your work before. You did the, uh, Mark, for those that don't know, Mark did the logo to Vampire PA, among other things. Um, and man, that's just great work. Yeah, and all of it looks great. Let's check out your campaign video. Hi, I'm Mark Wheatley, and I'm here in the jungle today to introduce to you my new project that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Edgar Rice Bears Visions of Adventure Portfolio Featuring Visions of Barsoom, John Carter and the Heroes of Mars, Visions of the Lidai Riders at the Earth's Core, Pellucidar, Visions of Jungle Beasts, Tarzan of the Apes, Visions of the Mexican Revolution, The Mucker, Visions of an Alien Invasion, The Red Hawk, Visions of the Old West and the Oakdale Affair, Visions of the King of Beasts on the Throne of England, Beyond 30, Visions of Beauty. Swords Against the Moon Man in Edgar Rice Burroughs' Visions of Adventure, a portfolio signed and limited by the award-winning artist Mark Wheatley, collecting eight original paintings of extraordinary vision and adventure, available now only through Kickstarter. There you have it. We get 14 prints now, Wonderful. though. Not just those yeah. first eight. We get 14 prints now. That music yeah. is great, too. Where did you get was... music from? It's uh, public domain music. It's from... Um, uh, 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 Kipling... Um, Blanket. <laughs> um, tell us, Mark. You can just say. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't want to um, know. You're yeah, muted, JC. The name of it is. Uh, <laughs> ah, geez, I'm blanking out. Uh, Rudyard Kipling, <laughs> Malgali, and uh, the, the Towering Inferno. Thank you. That's it. Yes. That. No, no, God. 
Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember. I'm not. Z League. Like, anyway, it's, it's, <laughs> that's where I got it from. So. Quite possibly could be used in Z League, actually. Yeah, it so. could be. Could be. Beowulf 86 uh, looks great. We'll be checking it out once I get home. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so what do Beowulf, we have? What do you God. have after this campaign? What's next on the on the dock for you? Oh God. Um, well, we just built a library on the side of the house. We've got to move a lot of books. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, we're going to be doing hard labor for uh, a few months. But um, I, I'm also the official artist for the Robert E. Howard Foundation. Mm-hmm. And we're doing a uniform edition of uh, Howard's books. I've done the uh, design and cover work for seven of them. I've only got 30 to go. Was that all? That, that, all. That'll 30? keep me busy a little bit. <laughs> Do it in between the move. That's all, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. So awesome. I have time. It's not going to be all this year, but it'll yeah. Well, viewers out there, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here live and if you're watching this recorded, uh, you know, as of now on uh, October 28th at 10, 17 p.m. Eastern time, there are 16 days left, 80 backers. Just 16 uh, days left. Just 16 days left to get yeah, your hands on It was a little bit of a awesome. short campaign. Yeah. But yeah, well we, done. We 10, oh, you're today. coming on 10 grand. Well I know. Done. Well yeah. done. Well done. And when we hit 95, 9,500, there's another stretch goal. Excellent. Oh, excellent. And uh mm-hmm. make sure to help share it. Come on, let's get that. that yeah, the one that, yeah, the one thing the one fiction thing, goodness. The one thing we gotta say, it's it's true of every every campaign like this. We totally understand given the circumstances that we're all going through. Sometimes right now isn't the time for you to pledge a campaign, no matter how much you want to do it. The one that doesn't mean you can't help and sharing it around on your social media, t- telling your friends about it and that kind of stuff. Ooh, look, it went up. Oh. Yep. Yes. That's and, uh, and and it just re- really does help, and that's how these things succeed. Yeah. Share it on your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, or if you're also a fellow streamer out there and you're looking for a great guest for your podcast, your YouTube channel, uh, you know, hopefully reach out to Mark and if he's available, uh, you guys can talk some goodness. And uh, again, I mean, all the video was great because you really got to see those images, and I mean, absolutely breathtaking, Mark. Thank yeah. Unbelievable. You know, Billy was asking uh, whether you could expect to get it. And one of the things we've already done is we've already gone to press on the proofs for the first eight prints anyway. Yeah. So this is actually one of the printer's proofs for the book, for the uh, portfolio, rather. Yeah, it's um, gorgeous. It is gorgeous. It's That's gorgeous. That's my favorite one right there. Yeah. And oh, uh, nice. this, by the way, these are untrimmed. Uh, you can see the trim marks, and it's also yep. the uh, the printer's codes up here that allows them to make sure the printer's inks are hitting the right tones. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we have, you know, this. And, Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Mark, are you a digital painter? I am. Yeah, I can see that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It doesn't look digital. It, look, it looks, uh, yeah, you it know, like oils. It doesn't look digital, yeah. Well, you know, I did over 3,000 watercolor and gouache illustrations before I switched over mm-hmm. to digital. And uh, my technique stays pretty much the same. I also noticed an interesting phenomenon at the studio when I was training guys from scratch to paint on the computer. Their stuff looked like that sort of concept art, plasticky look that you get from people who use digital all the time, right? Right. But because I came from real media, that's the technique I know, and my stuff tends to look that way. Yeah, that's gorgeous, man. Congratulations. This looks great. I love it. I, I, I remember you saying that the first time, the first digital piece that you felt like you hit your style from from print was, was the vampire PA cover. Yeah. Yeah. It really did paint up nice. Yeah. I was very happy with that. It's a, it's a phenomenal image that I I'm, uh, I'm blown away by to this day and it's on my book. So (laughs) (laughs) now do you have any other campaigns lined up uh, or is it, are you still working out some things? Well, um, Mike Omi and I have been talking about doing a campaign for another hammer of the gods, Mm -hmm. Um, but we've been talking about it for a year and a half now because we keep getting busy with other gigs. (laughs) Yeah. The the thing about a campaign is that it takes a lot of work. I know you guys all know this, Mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I pretty much clear my month when I have a campaign. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Yeah. Uh, one of the things I have to do the moment I finish this campaign is I promise my wife that I'm editing, I'm sorry, that I'm uh, doing the art directing for her newsletter for the local genealogical society here in Westminster, Maryland. 
So um, a redesign there is called for. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, Mark, I appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us, showing us this absolutely gorgeous campaign. As always, your artwork just blows my mind. And it was great to have JC Vaughn in the house helping us out, hanging. Really glad to be here. It's been too long. Yeah, it's, yes, good yes, to see it's been you. a long time. Been a long time for both of you guys being on here. So, again, keep us in the loop with everything you have, Mark. Billy, it was great seeing you. Yes. You know, wiping your face. What do you have? Adhesive from your Yeah, mustache? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> well, you don't want to shove your face up against anything without taking that off. You'll get stuck. Yeah. Absolutely. Go get Demacus. <laughs> You'll never let her go. <laughs> but make sure to click that link, guys. That link is in the description of this show, along with some other great campaigns you may want to check out on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, as well as it being pinned at the top of that chat. So head on over and check out Edgar Rice Burroughs' Visions of Adventure and get some awesome prints to hang up in your home, your studio, or just to have them there. You know, when you're reading those books and you want to get a great visual visualization, Mark is bringing that to you. He's bringing it to you, to your home, at your leisure. Your leisure. Yes. Yep. So everyone Put them on a... the wall of your treehouse. Exactly, on the wall of your treehouse. Or in your new library, maybe. Oh, there you go. There if you anyone go. out there has one, huh? Yeah. Are you going to have the... the? Have you been working on this library for... Did we talk about this last time you were on? Yeah, this library was start, supposed to start in January, yeah. uh, but they got delayed until March, and so they were supposed to finish in May, and they... Did I ask they... if you were going to have the ladder that goes around on the rolling... What? No, yeah, yeah, I think you did ask. Did, no, we're not I? doing that. We do have a spiral staircase. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Nice. We'll yeah. have to post pics of the library when it's done. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take some time. <laughs> there you go. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you hanging out tonight. Again, awesome campaign. We'll continue to spread it through our channel on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, hopefully we'll see that hit that, you know, obviously it's going to break 10K. Hopefully it'll break that 15. Who knows? Maybe even a 20. Sky's yeah, the limit, everybody. Funny. It would be wonderful. The Spread more the you word. give, the more you get. Exactly. Exactly. So, gentlemen, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend because yes. this is it for Pop and Pee this week. Much. Everyone have a safe Halloween. If you're going to a party, dress up, share some pics, right? No you drinking like and my driving. Costume? Eat the candy. <laughs> Your costume? Yeah, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah! Once again, once again, a re responsible adult. You can walk around go. with that skull, and you can be Hamlet, Mark. There oh. you go. Yeah, yeah. See, there you go. There you I go. knew him well. Yeah. Alas, before <laughs> Kahoric. <laughs> nice. Well, everyone, have a great night. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a happy Halloween. Be safe, and we will see you all Tuesday. Who do we got on there Tuesday? Go. There you go. Gabe, Tuesday, Billy. Wednesday. Wednesday. No, Tuesday. Tuesday? We're off. No, we're not off Tuesday. We have Gabe on. I thought we, oh, we do have Gabe on Tuesday. Oh, right. Yes. I didn't think. I thought. And then Wednesday is Wednesday. We have an awesome show. Yes. Well, Tuesday's gonna be an awesome show too. Tuesday's gonna be an awesome show. Wednesday's gonna be a great. Wednesday's gonna be a great show. We have Dan Mendoza on. We have Brian Polito on, and we're gonna be talking the story, the task, the journey of one artist who got the rights back. Yeah. Or maybe his two creation or two artists. How two they do creators. It. It's about the journey of losing your mm -hmm. creation, your creator own character, yeah. and then regaining it back. Yes, yes. So that is going to be Zombie Tramp for those. It's uh, that's what we're going to be discussing with Dan Mendoza and uh, Brian Polito was a part of that journey to get the rights back, and uh, we're going to be diving in with them and talking about that whole journey. It's pretty epic. So yes, uh, that'll be on Wednesday night. Oh, sorry. All right. So, everyone, have yourself Hang a great your night. Rights. Mark, thank you again for coming on. JC Vaughn, as always, it's a pleasure. And uh, before we do go, though, because you have been a very busy man, and we can't seem to get you on the show, but we got you. It's almost like you're in a lost universe somehow. I don't know. Thank you. But what have you been? Uh, what have you been working on before we? Get that on? is that is what I've been working on. The brand new Overstreet book called the Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide to Lost Universes. It is a uh, both comic book and photo journal. There is the Lee Weeks Iron Jaw cover from Atlas Seaboard. That sort of tells you how far afield we're going in this. Perfect. Um, uh, uh, Iron Jaw is my favorite Atlas Seaboard character, and and it just blows me away. This is uh, Starbrand by Alex Saviak, who actually drew issue three of Starbrand, uh, and Tom Palmer inked it. Wow. Uh, and everything that is listed in these books is pictured. 
That's awesome. So this is J.G. Jones. It's a Dark Dominion piece from the days of Defiant. It actually was an unpublished Defiant piece that he touched up and finished. And Jerry Ordway's uh, Mighty Crusaders. Yes. And, and so by having the Crusaders in there, one of the great things about that is we go from the Golden Age through modern stuff. And there's a lot of Silver Age stuff. There is even some Mark Wheatley stuff. Ooh. Yep. Mark wrote the Black Hood during the Impact line with Rick Burchett artwork that oh, nice. is badass. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And the, the, the MLJ Archie characters break into six distinct eras. Uh, and we've got all of them pictured in there, and it's really cool. In many cases, we've got interviews and overviews. All of the, all of the sections have an introduction. Uh, we've got cross-gen. We've got defiant. We've got a lot of defiant. Um, You've got because, that page that's the crossover between Dr. Seuss and the Black Hood. Thank you. You did. You put that in there, I thought. And the... Thanks, TJ. I appreciate you supporting the book. Really do. Uh, the great thing to me about this book is it is going to be used way beyond when the prices are current mm -hmm. because it, it really is. It's a checklist of all these great things like the Tower Thunder Agents, the Malibu Ultraverse, um, uh, Original Valiant and VH2 Valiant. And all of this stuff is pictured. Milestone, Original Milestone. And you know, some of this stuff is $3 comics. Some of this stuff is starting to appreciate very quickly in, in value. Uh, there's some serious value in the uh, Golden Age MLJ Archie stuff. Mm -hmm. And and some of the stuff, Broadway TJ is not a universe as far as I'm concerned. The, the, the titles don't relate to each other. I love I love the stuff. Uh, I, I was participated in, in, matter of fact, in Fatal, I think it's number three. Uh, one of the characters will say, Vaughn, you're in charge here because I was sitting right there when they were scripting it. Uh, uh, and uh, Joe James, who wrote, uh, co-wrote some of that stuff and wrote Nights on Broadway is a partner of mine on a, on a pretty cool project. So I love, I love the Broadway stuff, but I don't think it's a universe. And, uh, but what, a cross-gen as well? Yeah, cross-gen, which is, you know, that's a lot of books. Uh, because until they fell apart, they were they were pretty much a machine. They put out yeah. a lot of stuff, and a lot of it was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Excellent, nice. And when when is the when will this actually be out? For That's a, thank you for asking that. We were Mark was mentioning earlier the uh, paper situation, and I know Billy ran into that. Uh, bindery situation yeah. with the she omnibus, and that's exactly what happened to us. We had originally scheduled uh, November ten on sale. Uh, it became pretty clear a while ago that it would be more like December. Well, now because of the bindery situation, we're looking at a February 16, actually this is the first time I'm announcing it, uh, February 16 on sale date. Uh, we'll be off press January 28th uh, and off out of the bindery more precisely. Mm -hmm. um, see, see I, this is one of the reasons I decided to do a portfolio. You know what you don't have to do with a portfolio, right? You don't have to bind them. Right, see. Yeah, yeah sure. absolutely, and, and it's really the hardcover uh, that's that's staying it, but you know the, I I could have abandoned the hardcover. I could have canceled that, but basically, and you've seen the book, Mark. Um, I really believe that the people, who, the people who want this book uh, are going to end up going back and wanting the hardcover because they're going to use it for a long time, a lot longer than the prices are. But it's, it's like an art book. I mean, it's just chock full of images. It's just... it, it does, and and one of the things I feel very proud about because. Uh, Overstreet, we're not known for, other than our covers, for thinking about comic art. We're thinking about the comics themselves. Each of the sections opens with a text in intro and a big splash of original comic art. And that's true for all of the entries from Atlas Seaboard through to the end with, uh, with Valiant. Uh, each of the eras is rep represented uh, and some really fantastic stuff. We've also got a lot of behind the scenes interviews and uh, you know a few bits of analysis and things like that. Uh, some great little did you know trivia things. And the book is, I, I'm really excited about it. I, I've worked on an awful lot of Overstreet books over the years uh, and I've never put my name on the cover of one of them before this. So that'll tell you how excited I am about it. Yeah, I look forward to it. I'm definitely gonna have to get my hands on a copy myself and maybe we should do a show on it. 
I would I would love to do that. TJ's mentioning Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, yeah. which was a Tony Bedard written title, Billy. Yeah, I, I recall oh. that. I do. Excellent. Well, we look forward to that, JC. And Mark, if thanks, you really, thanks for going asking on, about it now. Really yeah, appreciate definitely. it. I'm looking forward to it. Mark, if you have anything else coming down the pike, please feel free to reach out. Billy, if you ever decide to do anything, you know, let me know as well. If you ever want to come on the show, you know, I'll be glad to have you. Sure. <laughs> but all right, everyone, have a great night. We hope to uh, you all have a great weekend. Happy Halloween. And uh, Thanks we for will see me. you on the next one. Thanks, Mark. Going. Thanks, Niall. Thanks, Billy. Share Thanks, those campaigns. Great Check the description. Campaigns. Great campaigns. Back them all. All of them. I hit the wrong one. Ah! Hey everyone. hey, everyone. Thank you for joining, you for joining, us, on joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon.